Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christian Roberts. I'm the Director of Education at the Dallas Opera. I'm here with my fantastic colleague and co-host, Quodicia Johnson, Education and Company Culture Manager for the Dallas Opera. And we have returned again for another episode of Taking the Stage with Christian and Quo. One of the things we've started doing and that we will continue to do is a land and people acknowledgement. So we always want to take the time to acknowledge that here in Dallas, we are on stolen land. Dallas is not unique in this as the entire nation is on stolen land. Here in Dallas, we are on the stolen land of the Caddo, of the Wichita and of the Comanche sovereign nations. So we want to acknowledge that those sovereign nations were forcefully removed from their homes, facing genocide and other really horrible conditions so that others could come in and claim the land as their own. And in that, there is an effect that has taken place that continues to take place in which many individuals are actually being dismissed and the humanity of those sovereign nations, their descendants and everyone else being dismissed. In addition to that, we want to acknowledge that others were stolen from their home off the coast of Africa and brought here to Dallas to build what is now Dallas through forced labor. They were enslaved and forced into free labor. Dallas is on stolen land built by stolen labor. So we want to acknowledge that. And again, Dallas is not unique in this. But we want to make sure that as we acknowledge this and while we did not create these conditions, we do have the responsibility, we have the honor, we have the capacity to make sure that we're doing what we need to help heal that harm, to help correct those issues. So I thank you all for joining me in this land and this people acknowledgement. And we often um, wanna also take the time to make sure that we thank everybody for tuning in Thank you for your continued support. Uh, as always, quick shout out to David Lomeli. You know hey, where you are, sir. <laughs> and, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about that. And the Land and People Acknowledgement sort of leads me into our topic for today. Because a lot of times when Quo does those, um, we get feedback sometimes that those make people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to, and, and it should. It should make you uncomfortable, yes. um, even though it, it, it absolutely should, because it's, it's the truth and it's, it's not one of the, the best truths of our past. And I'll just leave it at that. But I want to talk today on the subject of discomfort and leaning into our discomfort, because the topics that we often discuss on this show and, and in the work that we do um, can be uncomfortable and facing truth can be uncomfortable. So I want to talk about that today. And I want Quo and I, we're, we're going we're gonna to run through this a little bit today. So one of the questions that we get, well, in, in this work, and it actually came from a story um, of an experience that you had yes. uh, in, in, in talking about this, um, the, the, all the things that are going on in our society right now, we are, of course, dealing with a pandemic. We are dealing, dealing with civil unrest. Uh, we are dealing with an enormous amount of hate. And a lot of this is not new um, for, for some of us. The pandemic no one living right now has actually been through this to where they can remember it. I'm not saying that there were not people alive during 1918 when the Spanish flu came around. But what I'm saying is something on this um, epic of a, of, a, of a scale, if you will, um, that has definitely uh, happened before. But we are also dealing with things in this country that have been a reality for many of us already. Mm -hmm. And people often ask the question, how can this be? Like what is, how can this be? I don't understand how this can keep, these kinds of things can keep happening. Are we not learning our lesson? So, Quo, go ahead and tell them that story because I think it's important that, they, uh, that, that people understand that this is not by accident. Yes. So the, a saying that we often have is how can this be? There's this, this, how can this be? How can this be happening? How can this be that I didn't know these things? That came from, or that phrase came from an experience I had in which I was observing, I think it was a, an academy or an event for women, pretty much. And so the conversation steered into the lack of representation or the lack of presence 
from women, the lack of women or female presence in a lot of the things that we study and a lot of historical context in a lot of disciplines and a lot of fields. Of course, at the time we were speaking about music, but that extended into science, that extended into health, that extended into a lot of different things and just the lack of female or women presence in that. And so a lot of the women were saying that they were learning about all these other names that they never knew of, degrees that they received in which none of these women were ever mentioned. And the, the phrase was, how can this be? It just went around the table that how can this be that we did not know? How can this be that they were taken out of the picture? How can this be that their names are not known and they are not taught to those who are receiving degrees that those who are participating in higher education, quotation marks. <laughs> and in that moment, it became extremely clear that people only listen and hear what they want to hear, mm -hmm. listen to what they want to listen to. Yep. I personally was not surprised that there are a lot of women who have been pulled out of the, the story because for centuries there have been many communities, especially communities of color, there have been different communities um, who have experienced kind of different economic status. There's just been a lot of people who've been pulled out of stories. For centuries, people have been saying, you removed this from the story. So that connects to the land acknowledgement because the fact that those who settled this land committed genocide in order for it to take place, the fact that that is a fact is often pulled from the story. And then the presence of those sovereign nations are often removed from the story. And as we continue into what it means to create art here in the United States, what it means for all of the different artistic disciplines and who gets pulled out of the story. So with that, we have what Christian and I call the how can this be? These how can this be moments? How can it be that we don't know these things? How can it be that these things are still happening and these things are still occurring? And the response is, for me, in, in how I see things, is that people are paying attention to what they want to pay attention to within their own comfort. So it has been a result of centering your own comfort in a way that does not take into account how other people are suffering, does not take into account who else is not being told or who else is not a part of the story. So it does not take into account the many voices that are missing in the story because those who are able to best benefit or most benefit from it, even though it's not completely 100% comfortable, continue to do so. Sacrifice in certain comforts so that people can remain within proximity of power. And so as I sat and I observed these women saying, well, how can this be? How can we not know? And my question was, how did you not question? How did you go in with all, 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 you went through the entire education and at no point did you look up and say, hmm, where is everybody else? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so as we do that and as we bring that here into August, well, the end of August of 2020, after we had what we call the awakening that took place a couple of months ago and as people kind of actually treated it like a summer project in many cases, Everybody was very adamant about making sure that we were fighting for racial justice, that we're fighting for social justice. And then slowly that turned into fatigue and then slowly that turned into, I'm going to go talk about something else. We have to focus on budgets. We have to find out how we're going to get back on stage. We're moving back into this, how can this be moment? As we've experienced yet again, someone else or other individuals who have had to suffer in the past couple of weeks because of brutality. And so we're having this question again of how can this be? I thought things were getting better. And so that's kind of where, where we're looking at and what we're looking at for this particular conversation because it's a matter of who gets to sleep in their own comfort, who gets to sacrifice or has the luxury of sacrificing things for their own com comfort. And, you know, we, it, I find in this conversation that when Quo told me that story when she was uh, at that event, and I, I, I just, I laughed at first because I was like, 
But it was, it also reminded me of the danger of leaving out parts of the story mm -hmm. and of the, the false narratives. And um, I know that, I think the phrase is something like, you know, um, history is recorded by the victor, okay, by the person that is victorious. And th they mean they get to shape the story. And that's the reason why even on this show, I always say, you know, question the narrative, ask questions. Um, because otherwise you will have these moments. And the other thing I will say is the, the temporary sort of fix that many people had in, in putting out statements and, and um, you know, saying that, they, that there were going to be action plans and all of this kind of stuff, you know, we saw it, sort of saw it going out of the window. And I, I realized that this can be exhausting, but you know, somebody's life mattering is not a trend. Not a trend. It's not a summer. It's not a trend. It's not a summer project to remove discomfort. It is. It is somebody's life, and it is somebody that has to live on this earth and walk on this earth. It is also not a political issue. No. Nope. I keep hearing people say that they don't want to. That that you know. Well, we don't get involved in politics. And for me, I'm like, this is not a political issue. Somebody's right to exist on the planet is not a political issue. No. Um, save that. Save, save the other stuff of politics, but that's not one of them. And so, I, I I caution us all right now as we look at this that we do not go back into the same things that we were doing before because things have gone are going to change they have to change covid has inevitably changed everything that we've done and it's going to change the way we have to do business it's yes. going to change the way in which we engage the community it is going to change the way in which we educate it's going to change everything mm -hmm. and the question is when this is all said and done are you going to be one of the ones standing with this change that is inevitable I often say this is where the rubber meets the road. That's a country saying, and you can say what you want to, but my, 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 my entire point of saying that is that this is where we're going to see who's going to stick with doing the right thing, because this is the right thing to do. And as exhausting as it may become, as baffling as someone else getting hurt um, through brutality, as difficult as these topics are to tackle of race, of equity, of diversity and inclusion, of, of our historical issues, even the, our historical narratives that are the ones that are not even so comfortable. I would I would tell you that the that the if the historical narrative as it is with with many many people's stories being told, not just one, mm -hmm. and and many new new issues, that, that many things that be, may be new issues to you make you uncomfortable hearing about them and reading about them and watching them, imagine the people who have to live them and deal with it every single day. Because it's not just history for us. Not just history. It's an everyday live things. And it comes, just, it just comes in a different form. You know, it, for 400 years ago, it might have looked different. And now it just comes in a different form. So I would really encourage you to continue to question the narrative. Um, make sure that when you make these moves and you make these statements and you move and say you're going to commit to the work of equity and diversity and conclusion that you have to inclusion pardon me that you have to understand that this is a lifelong commitment and that you may not see the end of the work and i think that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow because people want to know um kpis in this kind of work uh, they want to know the check boxes and action items mm -hmm. that they can check off in doing this work. And the problem is, is that most people aren't even ready to have the conversation. Right. They continue having conversations of what this look like, looks like. Learning the history, learning the terminology, learning the history, the true history of the inequities that have plagued us for so long and the systems that have not served the whole of us for so long. And that's why I say that it is a lifelong commitment. And it's not one to take lightly. And I don't say this to be rude or lecture or preach at anybody. I say it because it's the truth that this is going to take time. This has been going on for a long time, but there are things that we can do. What we cannot do is go back.
because things are not going to be the same after all this. COVID should, alone has made this made sure of that. Yeah. And we should not go back and it should not be the same. And even as we speak about the discomfort that comes with the land and people acknowledgement, I always say that if the truth, the absolute truth provides discomfort, then we got to check the way that we're living. Yes. That's what it, it comes down to that. If me telling you the truth makes you uncomfortable, you telling me the truth makes me uncomfortable. That means I need to check something. That means that you, you need to check something. We all need to go back and reevaluate what we're doing. But in and, well, and you need to examine. The thing is, it really takes a self-examination. Right. People think that this is an organizational why thing or something like that and a societal thing. And it is. But you're forgetting who makes up organizations and who makes up the society. It is people. Mm -hmm. It's people. And so if you as an individual person are not looking at yourself and saying, how am I contributing or not contributing? How am I helping or not helping it with this? Then that's where the, that's where the issue lies. This is what, what Quo says all the time and what I talk about all the time. This is heart work. Heart work. And, and laws can change. Um, laws can change. Policy can change. All that can change. But if the heart and the mind are not changing, then, it's then just, therein lies the problem. It's okay. just a project. People enact policy and we create policies according to those we expect to benefit from those policies. And based on the expectations of those policies and expectations of the results of putting those policies into place, that determines who actually receives the true benefit. And we have to acknowledge that the policies that we have in place, no, they, they're not meant to serve everyone. And the ways in which we approach enacting those policies and making sure that they're being fulfilled. No, that's not coming from a place of making sure that everyone benefits uh, within the, the best of our ability as a nation. So in this, it's always important to me that we talk about what it means when we are centering our own comfort centering our own idea of expertise. You spoke about KPIs, you spoke about strategic plans and people having action items and things. Part of that plan is a conversation, many conversations, because one of the things- Lengthy. That, one, <laughs> continuous conversations. One of the things that the system does is it prevents us from having voice and it prevents us from having voice together with one another. So that's why if you're dealing with some of these at your organization or other organizations and you're, you're just learning about it truly and you're ready to see some change, I caution that because that is the result of people wanting, again, to put their own comfort before the actual work that needs to be done. You're tired of talking about it. You're ready to see it. When do we see change? When you're okay with talking about it when it becomes something that you discuss every single day or when you're mindful of it as much as you're mindful of ensuring that you're within budget, ensuring mm -hmm. that you're actually pre producing art, ensuring that it becomes a part of the purpose of the organization, part of the purpose of your individual work. That's when we'll start to actually see some change. That's <laughs> when we'll start to see things in a way that makes it clear what the goals are. So it's not enough to have one, two, again, four, five, 10, 25 conversations if the work is not being done and if the heart's work is not being done as we create policies to make sure that we're supporting what we're wanting to achieve, which is equity or as much equity, as much as possible for everyone. In this, I often give the example of the land and people acknowledgement because it is the truth. It is a truth that is often dismissed, mm -hmm. but as again, as I say, we did not create these conditions, but we do have the honor, we have the responsibility to come together to make sure that we correct it. So yes, it makes people uncomfortable and yes, people can be uncomfortable. We can push past that discomfort so that we can actually create solutions. And that's what this is about. If we decide to silence because we're uncomfortable, then where do we get? What do, Nowhere. We, learn? What do we know? And we end up with the, how can this be? How can this be type mm -hmm. of thing that's taking place? It's this way because you chose to disregard the ways that other people were making you uncomfortable. It is this way because you chose your own comfort over paying attention to the fact that people have been yelling for centuries about the fact that people have been mistreated, that they have been mistreated, that their communities have been mistreated. It's there, it has been there. So well, and it's a, it goes, 
Sorry, it is, quote. Yeah. Well, it's and I'm saying when people say, how can this be? It, it's like this because you had the luxury of not having to pay attention to it, while others have had to make sure that their voices, their existence is seen and that their voices are heard. So that's well, how we because they're very, our very survival depended on it. And I think that's the, that brings into the question, you know, um, you know, why, why we must approach this kind of work differently, um, why we must, um, again, you know, uh, examine ourselves, um, because this, this thing has been going on for a long time. It's systemic. It was built that way. It was built to do what ex exactly what it's doing. I hear people saying the system is broken. No, the system is working exactly how it was supposed to. It was built to benefit a one group of people. Okay, still, while everybody benefit, else wasn't even in consideration. While still not even benefiting everybody in that group. That's the in thing. that group exactly. And it's systemic in this way that it is self-sustaining. There yes. are so many things that extend to make sure that this system of oppression and the different types of oppression, right? We're not just talking about racism, but the different types of oppression against nationalities, the against mm -hmm. ethnicities, against religion, religion, yeah. mixed abilities, orientation, all of these things, the system of oppression that leans into a fi false ideology and a, a false understanding or a fallacy of racial hierarchy or human values the system that is built on that doesn't serve anyone truly. No. Because look at where we are. And, and in this, we have people who assume or would rather just kind of get to the work without realizing that this is part of the work. Having sitting and no. talking conversations, that's part of the work, but then also making sure that we're not centering the experiences, the voices, the intellect alone quotation marks, mm -hmm. of those who have dominated the stories for so long. You cannot measure this with the same tools that were used to create the nonsense. Yes. Cannot yes. You cannot fix this tools. machine. Yes. Those same methods, it does not work that way. So it as we find ourselves yet again, here we are, as we find mm -hmm. ourselves here again, we have to truly sit down and ask the real questions who do we expect to be at the end of this? Yes. Right? What, what are we trying to achieve? Who, who are we trying to ensure receives equity? Who has received greater advantage? Because that means that you won't get the same advantage anymore, mm -hmm. which means progress is going to look different to you. And it's going to feel different to you. So we have to be mindful of those things because in the end, we have to be mindful that people are suffering. And as we are seeing that people are suffering, as we ourselves are suffering, yes, right? Everybody's suffering. Not to take people away. People are exhausted. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Not to take away from anyone's <laughs> suffering. It is a matter of what is unnecessary. And what is a project of us clinging to systems that do not serve us as a whole? As a whole, that's what I keep saying. Because what, what may be working for some has not worked for many of the rest of us. And we know this, and we're seeing the, the symptoms of a larger problem right now. And I think it keeps taking people aback. You know, people keep getting taken aback by this. So when you find yourself asking the question, how can this be? or why is this still happening? Mm -hmm. Answer those questions. Because there are materials, there are resources where you can go and find out how this happened and what it looks like for other people. There are whole organizations who do work. We've had some of those organizations on this show who do this work, who they're looking at the root. They have researched uh, uh, the area that they're in. They have looked at the laws that are, and policies that have been put in place. They have looked at the full history of the place. They have heard stories outside of the, the known narrative mm -hmm. and put things together. Mm -hmm. And it will show you why we are where we are and why these sort of things keep happening. And the bottom line is this, the arts are not exempt. This is not just an opera problem. This is a societal problem. And if it's in society, it's going to get in every facet of society. And right. unfortunately, it is in the very DNA of this country. And we have to face it. Mm -hmm. People might be mad at me for saying that, 
be mad. But I invite you to go do the research for yourself. And you know, you may still be mad, but it should not be at me. I'll leave Again, that if we find when we find truth and we find ourselves being uncomfortable about the truth about the truth there's some self-evaluation that has to take place but and it's then very, know that once you look into that discomfort once you lean into it again we can move beyond it to actual change but if we continue to stop because we're uncomfortable or we're tired or because we don't see any results got to be mindful of what it means to have realistic expectations in this work Yep. And what it means to truly give space, take up space, and what that means and what it looks like. And, and to understand that it's going to be a journey for each individual person. And it's a journey that if you're serious about wanting to do the right thing and truly trying to form some sort of equity and some sort of justice and some sort of access Okay, and inclusion, all these things that we continuously talk about, that it's going to take time and it's going to take commitment. And that just as this system was, is, 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 was built to bring us where we are right now, we can still use those, those, that, 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 that kind of energy and that, that, that uh, long-term commitment that we have to trying to do the right thing and fixing it. Do the right thing. Okay, just do the, just do the right thing. Ain't that a, ain't, that's, ain't that a movie? Okay. Just do the right thing. Um, because it's, <laughs> and, and I would also say this, uh, for those of you who are tired, I understand humans get tired. I get tired, I'm tired. I'm sure Quo gets tired. Yes, and, and this past, tired. these past weeks, these past months have been exhausting, right? Absolutely and, exhausting. And the title of our, our episode for episode. today. But we have to be mindful that until we are willing to actually commit to doing what is necessary and to commit to acknowledging that providing false division and polarizing every single decision until we're every actually, single issue, every single issue until we're actually committed to sitting down and having actual conversations, no one sleeps. No. There, there will be no solutions until we are actually committed to dismantling the system that is, that is attempting to divide us, or that is dividing us in a way. Yes. So we are committed to dismantling the system and then replacing it with something that actually acknowledges the better parts of our humanity and sharing in that and having true connection and centering truth. No one sleeps. It continues, no, and, continues to pile and on. Well, and, and, and then while we're in that process, get, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, anybody who's an artist, especially a performing artist, we've been in costumes where we had to pretend to be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, so get comfortable being uncomfortable. And even putting yourself out as an artist can be uncomfortable. So mm -hmm. I know we can all relate with being uncomfortable. But you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable because that is what it's going to take. This is not going to be comfortable all the time. It certainly is not comfortable for me. It's not. But I personally have made a commitment to want to try to make things better. I know Quo has made that same commitment to want to make things better somehow, some way, to try to do some sort of good in all of this. And we're in the arts. We're creative people. We can do this. But if we can sit, if we fall into what our culture tells us, because we live in a culture of comfort and convenience. You yeah. know, we, we and, and, you know, we're all guilty. So I would, I would encourage everybody to think in, in, these, in these types of terms and to just question the narrative. Be brave, be bold, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask who's left out. You know, don't be afraid to make good trouble. And as we consider what it means to use the comfort and the privileges that we do have, be mindful that not everyone, even in this, in the, in the, even in this nation, not everyone has that. Nope. Not everyone has those same things. So while we are, I don't want to say feigning fatigue because there's actual fatigue, be mindful of what it means to actually 
be committed to get the work done because either it is or it isn't as melissa said there's no faking it it just is so and i it just is and i would also say to that to that point we're not saying not to take care of yourselves we're not saying not to not to you know do that mani petty or you know meditate or whatever it is you do to take care of yourself you okay should. we well, just said that self-care was should. important we, we just should. did an episode that said self-care was important but there's a really big difference between caring for yourself and restoring and then completely ignoring somebody else who is suffering and can't can't really do any anything about it when you can so please make sure that you understand the difference yes please you, you cannot pour from an empty vessel we're not saying that but there are going to be times where we're doing this kind of work and it's going to be uncomfortable these are uncomfortable subjects it is a it is a tough history to contend with mm -hmm. the things that are coming up to the surface right now even in the in in our in our in our empty opera halls right now which you know stinks because we all want to be back on the stage i know i do but right now we have some time to correct some problems or at least to begin to correct them and i would invite us all to do that yeah. myself included no so i i i leave that and i, I guess i want to wrap there Cole, unless you have anything else to add i think i think we covered it just make sure that you're going to be make sure you understand that you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable and the civil unrest that you see um it didn't just come out of nowhere um but we can try to work towards something better so with that i'm going to turn it over to quo for positive notes because we never want to leave an episode without positive notes because there are positive things that we can take away from this even in the midst of being uncomfortable and tired and yeah uncomfortable and tired that is true mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, positive notes. I'm going to send these positive notes to everyone, but in particular, those who are kind of just now learning about all of these things or those who are finding themselves continuously surrounded by the, the weight of social injustice, by the weight of having to navigate all of these things suddenly, um, having to learn, having to have uncomfortable conversations. So the, to you all, my positive notes are welcome. You are not alone, right? Because that is important that you know that you're not alone in this, but that it gets better together. And so the more that we participate in these conversations, truly to seek solutions, not to argue, not to just play devil's advocate in a way that is not productive, as we truly have conversations to acknowledge the humanity in others, it becomes contagious. And it becomes this opportunity for each of us to learn about someone else, for each of us to connect with someone else. And that is truly what will actually help dismantle this system so that we can replace it with something that is better, so that we don't get back to the how can this be. So take yes. heart in that, take strength in that, in knowing that you're not alone. You did not create it, but we do have, again, the responsibility, the honor, the privilege and the ability to help bring people together and to correct that harm. To those who have been in the fight, in the thick of mm -hmm. it, it is exhausting. People keep asking questions and they ask the same questions over and over. Yes, Lord. Materials and resources. And then they say, well, I want to see some change. And there is this, this thing where people have two or three conversations and suddenly they're experts and they, they want to move on. We're not alone. Same. You, you are not alone. And in, in this path that we have chosen and in the work that we've chosen to do, know that, as we said in previous episodes, it's just that little tweak, right? Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself. Continue to push forward. Continue to move forward. Continue to do so with purpose because that just connects you. We recently lost... Chadwick Bozeman. And so I'm going to quote him in this, in this positive note, in that purpose is the essential element of you. So we want to be mindful of what that means for everyone, for those who do the work, for those who are coming into the spaces and having these experiences for the first time. Be mindful of purpose. 
be mindful of the reason that we are having to have this conversation mm -hmm. and what it means for us to commit to ensuring that we don't have to have the same conversation the same way for the same reason going forward. With that, those are my positive notes. So folks, um, continue to be bold, continue to be brave, continue to question, continue to ask questions, uh, continue to seek out knowledge and truth. And um, we also want to remind you, because this is a, uh, the, the whole goal of this show, um, one of the biggest goals of this show was to make sure that we were um, doing something where we would work together to find creative solutions and that we would work to reduce harm. And so in just about, two, about, just about a week or so, uh, we will be doing a community healing circle. It's the Taking the Stage Community Healing Circle. It's going to be on Saturday, September 12th at 1 p.m. That's Central Standard Time. Um, we invite you to join us for that. There will be a link to the Google sign up form. Um, please join us for this because one of the things that we want to make sure that, that, that uh, we continue to do is to make sure that we are actually doing something. And this is part of that. So we want to make sure that you come into the space with us um, and have a chance to talk through some of these things um, and work through one of these. We both have been trained on this and it's very much a, a powerful uh, uh, way of doing things. And also just the, the shaping and the storytelling that is involved. Um, it always seems to um, bring some sort of, well, I don't know, for me, they seem, seem to bring, you know, uh, peace and, a, and, a, and a also helps give you that boost that you need to go on. So I would invite you all to take part uh, with us. Um, please sign up. Um, and, and, you know, we shall see you then. Quote, anything else before we finish out? You're all wonderful. Remember that as we move this work forward, as we move it and do so together. So thank you again for joining us for another episode. Yes, take care of yourselves and each other. Peace. Bye.